Oh my god, carbon dioxide ppm level inside my room is too high. The outdoor carbon dioxide ppm value is around 430 ppm, which is the highest value since 2.1 million years. New findings out tonight show the main cause of the climate crisis is rapidly getting worse. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere hit record levels in the spring. This video is brought to you by Ultium 365. The concentration of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere has been increasing primarily due to human activities such as the burning of fossil fuels, coal, oil and natural gas, deforestation and certain industrial processes. This increase in carbon dioxide emissions has been linked to global warming and climate change. Before the Industrial Revolution mid-18th to mid-19th century, the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide was relatively stable at around 280 ppm parts per million. However, since then, the concentration of carbon dioxide has risen significantly. In September 2021, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was about 415 ppm, which represents a significant increase of more than 45% compared to pre-industrial levels. But now in 2023, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is around 424 ppm, which is the highest value since 2.1 million years. The rise of atmospheric carbon dioxide content to some extent results in global climate change. It's important to note that the exact concentration of carbon dioxide can vary slightly depending on the location and time of measurement. How to accurately measure carbon dioxide gas concentration is becoming a universal research topic. DF Robot released its latest high precision infrared carbon dioxide sensor. The effectively measuring range is from 400 to 5000 ppm. This sensor is based on non-dispersive infrared NDIR technology and has good selectivity and oxygen-free dependency. As usual before trying something complex first I'm going to start with a getting started tutorial so that you guys can better understand how to use this beautiful piece of hardware. So in this tutorial I'm going to make a simple indoor air quality monitoring system using the gravity infrared carbon dioxide sensor V2.0 Arduino, an I2C supported SSD 1306O LED display module and a 5 volt buzzer. I'm going to use my latest Arduino and LoRa based development board because it already has all the required components and I only need to connect this carbon dioxide sensor. Watch my previous video if you want to make the same development board. According to the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating and Air Conditioning Engineers Standard 62.1, the recommended carbon dioxide concentration for occupied spaces is below 1000 ppm. However, achieving lower levels such as below 800 ppm or even 600 ppm is often desirable for improved air quality. So I'm going to use this carbon dioxide sensor for measuring the carbon dioxide levels inside my studio. This can help me determine if the ventilation is adequate. As you might know, when the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air exceeds 1000 ppm, it can have several effects. For example, reduced concentration, attention and decision making abilities. This can affect productivity and performance, particularly in environments such as offices, classrooms and workplaces. I want to keep the carbon dioxide concentration in my workshop as low as possible, so I'm going to keep the carbon dioxide ppm value below 600 and if it exceeds 600 ppm, the buzzer will turn on and then I can go ahead and open the windows or turn on the exhaust vent, etc. So without any further delay, let's get started. Operating voltage is 4.5 to 5.5 volts. Measurement principle is NDIR non-dispersive infrared. Measurement range is from 400 to 5000 ppm. Accuracy is plus minus 100 ppm. Response time is less than 90 seconds. Average power is less than 430 milliwatt at 5 volts. Operation temperature is 0 to 50 degrees Celsius. Operation humidity is 0 to 95% and lifespan is greater than five years and some of the coolest features are its highly accurate long lifespan auto temperature compensation water vapor interference resistance and analog output 
For more information, visit the DF Robot official website or you can read my article available on electronicclinic.com. I have added links in the description. This sensor automatically calibrates itself, but you can also manually calibrate it. So the first method is manual zero calibration. Short circuit the HD and ground of the sensor to calibrate it. It always needs to last for over 7 seconds at a low level. Make sure that the sensor runs stably for over 20 minutes at a concentration of 400 ppm before the calibration. But I don't do it manually, I let the sensor calibrate itself automatically. And now I'm gonna tell you about the automatic zero calibration. The automatic calibration function means that the sensor will intelligently determine the zero point according to the ambient carbon dioxide concentration and automatically calibrate it after a period of continuous operation. The calibration starts from power on and is performed once every 24 hours. The zero point for automatic calibration is 400 ppm. This calibration is suitable for office and home environment. I'm using my Arduino Nano development board, but you can also do the same exact connections on a breadboard. Simply connect the red and black wires to the Arduino 5 fold and ground pins and connect the green wire to the Arduino pin 2. The SD1306 O LED display module VCC and ground pins are connected to the Arduino 33 volt and ground pins, whereas the SCL and SDA pins of the O LED display module are connected to the Arduino analog pins A5 and A4, A5S the SCL and A4 is the SDA. The 5 volt buzzer is connected to the Arduino pin 8. You can follow this circuit diagram if you want to manually wire up all the components. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. Get your Ultium 365 workspace activated because Ultium 365 provides a useful solution in cases when you are facing difficulties with your PCB design and unsure of your next step. You can share your project in Ultium Designer or on the web with any user in just a few clicks. You will have full control over who you want to give read-only access for let's say comments and design inspections and who you want to give read-write access to allow full global collaboration by a geographically dispersed team with editing performed through Ultium Designer. Let me show you how to share your project. Simply right-click on the project name and select share. Write the user's email. Select read or write permissions from the drop down menu on the right and click on the share button. It's just that simple. I've added links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopod, the world's fastest component search engine. Now let's get back to our project. First, let's install the required libraries and then we will take a look at the programming. Go to the sketch menu, then to include library and click on the manage libraries. Search for the Adafruit underscore GFX library and install it. As you can see, I have already installed this library. Next, search for the Adafruit underscore SD1306 library. And as you can see, I have also installed this library. I downloaded this code from the DF Robot official website and of course I made a few changes. I added code for the OLED display module and for the 5 fold buzzer. So when the carbon dioxide ppm level inside a room increases above 600 ppm, the buzzer is automatically turned on. And when the carbon dioxide ppm level decreases below 600 ppm, the buzzer is automatically turned off. Along with the buzzer, you can also use a relay to control the exhaust fan or to open the window. It depends on you what exactly you want to control when the carbon dioxide ppm value increases inside the room. Anyway, I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the gravity infrared carbon dioxide sensor V2.0 in action. I'm going to use my 4S lithium ion battery to power up the Arduino so that I can freely move around and complete my testing. One more thing that I would like to talk about is I'm not using the Arduino 5 volt, but I'm using the 5 volt from my regulated power supply. It's 3 amps, which is more than enough for its smooth operation. When you power up the Arduino, wait for around 10 minutes because this sensor needs to be properly warmed up. During the preheating phase, you may see unstable and inaccurate values. And once the preheating phase is completed, then the carbon dioxide PPM value gets stable. 
I have been testing this sensor for hours and the carbon dioxide ppm value is quite stable. The carbon dioxide ppm value in my studio is high because all the windows are closed and there is no ventilation. Since the carbon dioxide ppm value is greater than 600 ppm that's why the buzzer is on. This sensor has been on for around 4 hours and it's still functioning well. If your power supply is good and you have properly warmed up this carbon dioxide sensor, I don't think you will face any issues in using it. The more time passes, the more stable this sensor becomes. The value is so high because there is no ventilation in this room and on top of that I have also smoked a few cigarettes. Anyway, my sensor is stable because I'm using a powerful regulated 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. So if you want your sensor to work stably, I recommend using a good power supply. And if you are going to use your Arduino to power up this sensor, you might encounter some problems. Next, I'm going to take this sensor outside to see if the carbon dioxide PPM level decreases or not. As soon as I took this sensor outside, the PPM value started to decrease, which means this sensor is working. I'm going to fast forward this video. You can see the final outdoor carbon dioxide ppm value is around 430 ppm. I have been testing this sensor for hours and it's working flawlessly. The values are pretty stable and I'm sure it's because of my 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. Now again I'm going to my studio and let's see if I can lower the carbon dioxide ppm level by opening the door and windows and I have also turned on the fan. As you can see the carbon dioxide ppm level inside this room is reducing because of the fresh air. I'm going to fast forward this video. You can see the value is still reducing. This is pretty amazing and now I can keep track of the carbon dioxide concentration in my studio. Now I'm going to take it to my bedroom. Right now the carbon dioxide ppm level inside my bedroom is around 635 ppm. I open the door and now let's see if the carbon dioxide ppm level is going to decrease below 600 ppm. The buzzer just turned off because now the carbon dioxide ppm value is below 600. So I just built myself this super awesome indoor air quality monitoring system. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.